Floatzel has historically been pretty bad. And while it's frail stat-wise, it's 105 attack paired with that 115 speed, with a little bit of help is actually kinda crazy. Its ability Swift Swim can double its speed in the rain, and then it can fire off 120 power rain-boosted wave crashes to do literally insane damage, paired with the Choice Band's 50% attack boost. If that wasn't enough, Terra Water can give an extra stab boost, effectively allowing it to knock out almost anything even resisted. It can use Ice Spinner for coverage, and things like Aqua Jet for priority, and honestly, Floatzel is way scarier than people think. Look, all I'm saying is, if it's raining outside, it's a bad day to be across from a Floatzel. This thing does definitely not get enough love, and that's what we're here for. If you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k. I'd love to have you as part of the journey, and with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Florges, and I have myself a Walnut who finds himself in a pretty nice matchup here, because obviously, I can gyro ball for some pretty good damage, this thing doesn't deal with physical attack super well, so I'm just going to take this opportunity to kind of expect a switch, I mean, go ahead and uh, set up my old Stealth Rock. Now, it turns out they're actually going to go for the Safeguard, which is kind of crazy. I guess one way to get rid of a Florges that never wants to die is to status it, and now there's going to be no status and I can't Thunder Wave some stuff either. So I get up my Stealth Rock essentially for free, and as they end up going for a Moon Blast, obviously I take it nicely, they probably expect me to switch, but instead I am betrayed by my red card once again. That's gonna force the switch out into a random teammate, and it ends up going into the Lucario, which is not ideal because I would have loved to go for the Gyro Ball you know, versus the Florges, but it's fine. I can just throw some balls at this guy, and then I'm like, you know, Lucario can't really do too much to me. As I would like to go for a Thunder Wave, I cannot because of the safeguard. So I decided to switch out here and I figured, you know, it's probably time to start making it rain. And it's looking way too dry out here and Bubblegum is going to go ahead and fix that with our cool little hair on the top of our head. So we do get the drizzle up. I just kind of figured that even if this is a sack switch, it's kind of fine. They decide to go for the Aura Sphere. Tells me it's a special attacking Lucario, which is mostly fine. And I'm going to go ahead and throw ball number two at him, as it turns out they're actually going to go for the Calm Mind. So this thing is setting up on the special side. It is also going to give it the special defense boost to likely be able to allow it to take a Weather Ball. And honestly, Weather Ball hits way harder than people think. In most situations in the rain, it does hit harder than a super effective non-stab attack. And as it does live, it's fine, because I'm max HP Politoed, and even at plus one, I can take the next Aura Sphere, and then fire off another Weather Ball to take care of it. So... At this point, Politoed's in kind of a weird spot because I want to try to take advantage of as much rain as I can with things like Floatzel. I also have the Feraligator back there, but for the most part, it's like I either switch this thing out and try to reset Drizzle later, or I just go ahead and let it sack here and then be able to bring in Floatzel and then still have quite a few turns left. So as they go into the floor just here, I decide I'm just going to let this thing go down. I find myself in a position where now Floatzel coming in versus this floor just is going to find itself in a real nice position against pre pretty much everything they have left. So I bring in the water wings and we are ready to start flapping. We are fast. We are ready to go ahead and shred some waves. I can obviously just outspeed, go for that wave crash, and this flower has no business being watered that aggressively. So it dies like every house plant ever. And now at this point, we can see what they want to go into. Again, I'm Floatzel with the Swift Swim. I'm faster than everything. And as they go into Dragapult, that is going to be something that obviously resists the wave crash. I am Choice Banded, but as I'm looking at it here after the Stealth Rock chip, I'm like, hold on a second. I can go for the Terra, boosted by the Choice Band, boosted by the Rain, and by the Terra, there's pretty much nothing on this Earth that wants to deal with this type of wave crash. So I put the fountain on my head and we are absolutely zooming out here, looking a little bit ridiculous, but in the process, also looking kind of scary. And check this out. This is the true power of Floatzel. I outspeed because of Swift Swim. I can go for that wave crash and Dragapult is just gonna straight up die. The Float Man is one of those dudes that, that literally does not care about any type of resist. And that is both amazing to outspeed the thing and just get that one hit kill. We definitely did need the Terra Boost there, you know, paired with the Rain and the Choice Band. However, now it's not looking great for whatever they got left. So as they decide to go into the Tinkaton here, the Big Hammer is gonna give it a try. They're like, hey, maybe this hammer is thick enough to, to surf this wave. I obviously can just bust out the wave crash and it doesn't even matter if this thing's like fully defensive, I don't think. Tinkaton easily goes down and all the Corviknights in the area are now safe from rocks being pelted at him. So, our buddy Floatzel here is here for a good time, not a long time. The bad thing about wave crash is mostly just the recoil and as I am easily chipped at this point, they can just go into the Dragonite 
and obviously so here's the situation they could either just go for that extreme speed and finish me off but if they expect me to switch and then go for something like a dragon dance your boy's in trouble so i just decide to stay in here they do go for that extreme speed and that is gonna pick me off but not before we absolutely just it caused a damn ruckus on the squad there and Floatzel is kind of cracked so rain goes away which is kind of fine at this point don't super need it i'm thinking maybe i go whisk cash and get the guy going but then i realized that thing's a damn liability so instead i decided to go into the alligator, and this is going to be the special attacking for alligator. so if you watched the most recent video you already know that this thing is working with sheer force boosted like ice beams and muddy waters and this gator is a damn problem so it turns out they do not go for the extreme speed because i can live at least one and that results in a nice icy death for the big derpy fella now that takes care of that and now the final mon is going to end up being the Sarah ledge which is perfect because for alligator is built for this and obviously they do still have the terra in the back pocket they're just going to end up letting it happen i throw some brown water at him and that is going to be a dead sharp boy so that's gonna be the end of game one thought it was just an interesting one kind of seeing the dynamic of Floatzel doing stuff that is kind of nuts and uh it was a fun one so with that that's gonna bring us into game number two with some more water wings action so this time my opponent definitely has some big threats but you know one thing we know for sure is that Floatzel is not afraid of a damn thing and let's jump into it so this time my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the chandelier likely just expecting the walnut to be the lead and they're absolutely correct. I'm about to get my ass roasted, and it's not really ideal for the fortress early. So I decided it's kind of just in my best interest just to go right into the Politoed. I can conserve the Sturdy plus the red card on the fortress for potential setups, and I'm looking at things like the Dragonite. It's kind of the main thing with Dragon Dances and Extreme Speeds, what can kind of stop uh, the momentum on this team. So I decided to bring in the Politoed here, who is just going to get flamethrowered, except it's damp out here, and so guess what? It doesn't even hurt and our little bubblegum ass is just gonna go you know throw in some weather balls around because that is what our little shiny froggy fella does now they decide to end up switching out here they're gonna bring in the meowscarada which obviously comes in expecting the water move here and i just go for the obvious play because i don't want anything crazy to happen i do throw a nice little ball at him gets him around half which i'm feeling pretty good about and I'm like, okay, so early, I'm probably not going to take advantage of this rain. And uh, I'm going to be able to at least conserve that thing and set up the drizzle potentially later. So I just decided to go right into the fortress now. I feel like not much else wants to come in versus Meowskarada. So I should probably try to get something going here. As they go for that flower trick, it's not going to do anything to us. It also does now just activate that red card. So while I do kind of make the sacrifice of now not having that versus things like the potential setup on the Dragonite, I at least stir some stuff up here and bring in just a random teammate, which ends up being the Dragonite. So I'm like, well, this is kind of fine. As I'm, If I'm Dragonite, my ass is setting up against this fortress. I'm just kind of like a guy that's easy to set up against. So I just decided to go for the Thunder Wave here. And they decide they're actually not going to go ahead and do that as they decide to bring in the Chandelier. Now... Getting a Thunder Wave off on this thing is great because obviously it's going to make it nice and slow, make my job a little bit easier versus this. But also, as I'm looking at this matchup, things like Dragonite with that multi-scale coming in for free without Stealth Rock up is going to be pretty bad in the long run. So I decide I'm going to actually go ahead and set up the Stealth Rock here, hoping that they overpredict, which actually works out nicely because they go for the Will-O-Wisp. Now, they probably thought I was going to go into something like the Feraligator, but obviously, the Walnut, he's a wall, he's a nut, and he doesn't give a shit about being burnt, so that is perfect. Now allows me to set up that Stealth Rock, and we're feeling at least pretty good. Be able to punish some switches. Next time Chandelure comes in, it's going to take a lot, but also, it's just super helpful. And uh, at this point, I realize I probably shouldn't stay in, and I'm actually just going to go right into the Feraligator. Now, the reason for that is because obviously I want to bluff the fact that I might be a physical attacker, and as I bring this thing in, I imagine they flamethrower. It turns out they actually go for the Hex, which is fine. Um, does a nice bit of chip. However, if I'm this thing, I probably go for the Will-O-Wisp. Now, expecting, with that thing being paralyzed, it's probably not of much value. And then I realize that they're actually just going to end up switching out. But here's why it doesn't matter, because this Gator is a damn track star. And as they bring in the Meowskarada, that is a very speedy fella over there. And I actually am going to set up the agility, doubling my speed, making Gator now faster than everything they have. And honestly, if you want to make something good, just make it fast. Honestly, for Alligator with an agility up is kind of cracked, even as a special attacker. So I can now go for that Ice Beam coverage. Being faster takes care of the Meowskarada, which is a huge threat out of the way. And now Gator is in a pretty decent spot here. With that agility at plus two, we are very fast. And 
there is still one fella that can stop us. Now, as they bring in Dragonite, it does take Chip that tells us it's not going to be heavy duty boots. Most importantly, it gets rid of that, uh, that multi scale ability. But as now they have the opportunity to go for the Terra, I, you already know what's coming. There's only one thing Dragonites do, and that is go for Terra Normals and then bust out Terra boosted extreme speeds and be priority assholes that like to kick children in the face. So it gets the diamond on his head, buddy. Do be looking fresh. And with that boosted extreme speed, I'm like, do I die to this? I'm kind of thick over here. I actually live with 12 HP, which is kind of nuts. It allows me to fire off an Ice Beam, which unfortunately doesn't do enough just because of that defensive Terra. But as now I know the next extreme speed's coming, I'm just going to go ahead and let the Gator go down here. I do end up taking me out. It wasn't really worth the risk running it if they wanted to go for a Dragon Dance. More of the story, I'm, I'm scared of things going for Dragon Dance, and we want to try to limit that from happening. So... With the Frolligator going down, the good thing is I can actually go right back into Politoed and set back up the rain. I also know I've got enough chip on this thing to where a Weather Ball kills it, and also without any boosts, it can't actually knock me out with just an extreme speed, because, listen, this Toad is definitely bulkier than you'd kind of think with max HP. So, they go for that extreme speed, they're just going to use the boost that they got. I do end up living it nicely because we literally do not die. And here, rather than going for the attack, I decided to go for the Perish Song. I kind of thought that potentially they would switch, and then it would kind of stir things up and force them to pivot around even further. Um, but instead, they do not. And now this thing's just stuck listening to my shitty song, and they do finish me off with another extreme speed. So there's a couple things working against Floatzel kind of grabbing the late game sweep here. That is obviously the priority in the form of the Dragonite, but also in the back they have a Slitherwing. If you know anything about Slitherwings, those fellas like to go for things like choice banded first impressions. And uh, when it comes to Floatzel being in the rain, we are fast, but not faster than priority. So I gotta try to kind of work around that. And I decide I'm gonna actually go into the lawnmower here. I know that I can take an extreme speed, and it's likely that they're gonna end up switching here because of that Parasong, and they do end up bringing in the fluffiest, most huggable little guy. So Slitherwing comes in, and it's actually gonna be booster energy, which is interesting because it does grab an attack boost. Kind of nice intel to know that it's not going to be choice banded. However, as I go for the Volt Switch, now I get to decide on who I want to bring in here. And looking at what I've got left, I kind of have to see who wants to deal with a very hard hitting first impression. And that is going to be our boy Whiskash. I feel like this thing can at least take an attack here. And so here's the plan. Expecting that first impression, I decide to go for the Dragon Dance, knowing I'd be faster on that next turn. And as I go for that first, it turns out they did not go for the first impression. They are instead going to go for the lunge. So that's going to be a nice little boosted lunge with the ability to drop my attack down. And that's annoying. It's like, give Whiskash a freaking break over here, man. Guy tries hard to get his attack up. And then all of a sudden, there's a lunge Slitherwing just lunging at you. So we do at least still have the speed. So, you know, I can just go for a liquidation boosted by the rain. And it lives on one HP because Whiskash cannot catch a damn break out here. Cannot whisk hash a freaking break. So, <laughs> one more lunge is going to take care of it. And while that is kind of bad, what is good is that now we know that this thing cannot go for our first impression. It can't switch out and then back in. So, basically, Floatzel is looking like it's going to be my little late game sweeper. Call this boy the janitor because we're about to start sweeping out here, at least hopefully. So, I go for the wave crash. They're actually going to end up switching into Dragonite. Turns out they do not want to conserve. Uh, the Terra Boosted Extreme Speed, which I could take at least one of. Uh, however, the Wave Crash is just going to absolutely obliterate the hell out of that pair. And now we get to see what they have to deal with the Floatzel in the rain. And it's and Here's the answer. Not much. We are fast. We still have lots of rain turns. And Choice Banded Wave Crashes are literally the delete button. So they decide to bring in a car, which is going to be the Rev of Room. And he comes out with his tongue out because he do be kind of freaky. And at this point, I can just go for that crash. There's no defensive terror they can even use, and uh, this thing is, has no chance. That he's easily going to be able to take care of it. He can roll his little wheelie ass back to the parking garage. And there is one still thing that can take an attack here, at least without any crazy boost, and that is going to be the Primarina. So as Primarina comes in here, it is going to take a little bit of stealth rock. And as I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, I still do a ton of damage to this thing, but you know what even helps with further damage is going for that extra stab with the Terra. So in the rain, Wave Crash, it, it, it nothing, it doesn't matter if you resist it, like truly, unless you're like something crazy defensive. But I go for that fountain, and at this point, I'm just kind of testing the limits of what this Floatzel can freaking do. I do easily outspeed, and Wave Crash in the rain with all of the boosts possible with the Choice Pad is going to be able 
to take care of the Primarina. And I love the unexpected kills with this damn Floatzel. It is literally... Something about it is just very satisfying to use. Also, I just, this is my Sinnoh homie right here. So, they're now down to two Pokemon left. One of them being this Chandelure, which is fine because as my rain is away, they're actually still paralyzed from earlier. The Fortress hooked it up with that Para, so it allows me to be faster. I can go for that Wave Crash here, and that's going to just easily put out the flames on this fella's head. And uh, it's, it's fantastic. Floatzel just out here grabbing body bags. And we absolutely love to see it. So the final Pokemon is going to end up being that Slitherwing. And as we saw, it didn't go for the first impression earlier. I'm kind of interested to see if it does have it. And I do actually die to my recoil, which is kind of poetic. We just go down with our own ship out here. Floats is like, I'm, f I'm fine. I'm just going to head out now. And I do still have the Vulture guys left. I can bring in the Rotom Mo, who is something that can likely easily handle whatever the... Uh, Whatever the Slitherwing wants to throw at me, plus be faster in the process, and also I forget that he actually has 1 HP, and the Stealth Rock just does my job for me. So, that is going to be the end of the game. I thought it was just a fun match. Using rain teams with Floatzel is fun, and uh, our, our guy is finally good now. We absolutely love it. And thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support on these videos. You guys are amazing, and I will catch you next time. Peace out.